Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Gypsy Nurses Back to School Fall 2021 Virtual Conference. I am Rachel Altum, the online community manager for the Gypsy Nurse, and we are in the middle of our conference right now. And the purpose of this conference is to teach you some lessons on travel nursing. This next session will come in handy when needing to downsize when you're hitting the road. You can't take everything, guys. You got to downsize a little bit when you go for those three months. You can come back to this stuff, but there's certain things that you need to just leave at home. So I am here with Steve Curtin, the CEO of the Gypsy Nurse. I'm going to pass it off to him, and he's going to say a few words to you all. Yeah, thanks, Rachel. Great to see you. And I'm, I'm looking forward to this session tonight about uh, living the minimalist lifestyle because I need to practice some of this. I've got you know 20-year-old sweatpants that I'm, I'm trying to get rid of here. So <laughs> I, I hold on to too many things. So I'm looking forward to Megan and Ty's presentation. But um, great to see you. And Great to have people joining us live here. Um, this is day number two of our three day long uh, fall virtual conference. We've had some fantastic sessions and uh, this session coming up uh, should be great as well. Um, Megan and Ty have joined us before and when we polled the community about some of the most popular topics to have for our fall virtual conference, this came up very close to the top, living the minimalist lifestyle. So we look forward to that. But uh, we'd like to welcome everybody joining us live. Um, if you can't stay for the whole session, we'd like to let you know that all of these sessions are being recorded and they will be available on demand on the new gypsynurse.com. For those of you that haven't visited the site in a while, we have revamped the site. We've got some great new features, particularly for uh, registered members. Um, in particular, the new events hub is available and all of our events over the next uh, coming days for the conference as well as in the future will be listed here uh, and this is where you will also access the on-demand events so all of these will be recorded and available to registered members only so if you were not yet a member uh, or a registered member of the gypsy nurse please do so i ask you why you haven't <laughs> because we've got some we've got some great stuff here um, among some of the things that registered members can do uh, in addition to accessing on-demand content. You can create content alerts, event alerts. You can access uh, recommended jobs. You can uh, create job alerts. There's so many great things that you can do. You can connect and communicate with other nurses. So I uh, really encourage you to become a member of the gypsynurse.com. It is free. So there's uh, no charges or anything like that to worry about. We provide all of the resources to our travel nursing community for free. So uh, please consider becoming a registered member. Um, but I look forward to Megan and Ty's presentation. Um, would also like to thank our sponsor, um, Fusion Marketplace. And I believe, Rachel, you have, as they used to say, a word from our sponsor here. Definitely. Yes. Fusion Marketplace is a one-stop shop for healthcare travelers where they can easily compare benefits, pay packages, and reviews across multiple agencies. As a traveler-first driven platform, Fusion Marketplace is a curated and career experience where healthcare travelers can take control of their career. So they wanted to share a little word with you here. Fusion Marketplace, the one-stop employment hub for travelers. Search and compare jobs from multiple agencies to find the perfect fit. Apply easily with one click and pack your bags. Fusion Marketplace, find your next adventure today. So thank you so much, Fusion Marketplace. And speaking of packing your bags, our next presenter are a travel nurse couple who have been living out of their van for the past year and a half. Uh, they may look very familiar to you because we've had them on a few times. They're our Gypsy Nurse mentors. They're our Gypsy Nurse favorites. Uh, please welcome Megan and Ty. Hi, guys. Hey, guys. Thank you so much for coming. Good. Well, thank you so much for coming on here. We're excited to learn some minimalist lifestyle tips. Steve and I both need it. So absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Hey, also, uh, like Rachel said, we have been uh, living in a van and living a minimalistic lifestyle for the past year and a half as travel nurses. And mm -hmm. uh, we were hoping to share our experience and, um, and, and, just kind of hopefully give some guidance on maybe those of you who are hoping to kind of take the leap into a minimalistic lifestyle. Yeah. And the things that we're sharing today aren't just for people that want to live in a van or live in an RV. It's just kind of helpful tips to kind of declutter your life as travel nurses. That's always helpful. And we all need a little bit of that. So um, we'll get started. Yep. 
Um, so um, I guess we'll just kind of share a little bit of our story and how we got into more minimal living um, and changing our mindset. Um, so before we started travel nursing, we started traveling in January of 2019. And um, before we did that, we had apartments. We didn't have a house, but we did have apartments that were full of our things, um, including furniture. We had a good bit of clothes, um, home decor, electronics, um, all the, stuff. Yeah, all the sports <laughs> and outdoors equipment. Um, so we kind of had to look at everything we had then and kind of examine, is this something that we're going to need once we start traveling? So um, in the beginning, I feel like we did kind of when we left for our first assignment, we kind of held on to a lot or we put some furniture and storage at our family's house or um, we did downsize a little bit, but just not enough. A little bit. A little bit. Our, yeah. our cars were still mm -hmm. packed to the roof full of stuff. Yeah. Our first assignment, we took two vehicles and we had them packed with all of our things like to where we could barely see out of the back. And um, at this point in our life, we have downsized to just living in our van and pretty much everything that we own fits in there. So we downsized a good bit over the last two years. Yep. Um, so uh, basically, after our first, like she said, after our first two contracts, uh, we, we realized that we had to make a change. Um, not only was it dangerous not being able to see out your side <laughs> in rear view mirrors driving down the interstate, mm -hmm. but um, it just wasn't, it wasn't for us, we realized, you know, it's you're moving every three months as a travel nurse, um, packing all your stuff up. It just wasn't practical in, in our minds. Um, so, you know, we decided we were going to do a major downsize. Um, and that's, that's kind of when we decided we were going to, to get a van. Um, and that kind of pushed the issue even further. We were like, okay, we've got to fit everything we need in this van. Um, so it was, it was quite a process and, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, there were some things that we both, I think, didn't want to let go of. Um, but, you know, once we did and we took the leap, it was almost a sense of freedom mm -hmm. um, and kind of it was a realization that you don't you don't need all that stuff. And, you know, you, it was awesome. Yeah. And I think one of the one of the big reasons for us, too, is we were spending so much time um, just looking for places to rent that, um, you know, had to be furnished or um, we would need to have enough room for our furniture and our vehicles, which is it's just too much. Um, and then in between assignments, you're not able to really explore or do a lot. If you've got all of your possessions in your vehicle, you feel a lot you know, in a vehicle that's open and has a lot of windows like ours did. Um, you just don't feel as comfortable you know, going places and kind of exploring along the way. So um, that's kind of a little bit of our story. And we've been um, living in our van now since we moved in in January of 2020. Uh, we bought it. It was an empty shell, built the whole thing out. And then we've been in it for about a year and a half now and um, have been travel nursing in the van for a year and a half. And it's just been a game changer. Yeah, great experience. Um, so what does minimalism look like? I think it's, uh, it can be a subjective thing, but to us, um, it's living a life of intention and purpose. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, instead of, of chasing the, the newest and best things or, you know, chasing uh, material items, uh, we decided that we were going to let go of those things and, and chase the, the things that meant more to us and, and, uh, you know, fulfilled our lives um, being outdoors, uh, mm -hmm. you know, just exploring the, the beauty that the world has to offer. Um, that was, that was our decision mm -hmm. for a minimalistic lifestyle. Um, you know, we, we just decided we're going to remove the clutter, um, in our life mentally and physically, because mm -hmm. uh, like Megan said, it wasn't just, you know, physical material things. It was uh, a mental burden that came along with it. Mm -hmm. it was stress and, and anxiety um, associated with those things. And uh, we decided we were going to replace it with the things that brought value to us. Um, so, you know, the freedom of uh, the idea of consumerism and, and material things, um, instead of focusing on those things, uh, we found 
the true worth and in, in the beauty of the world around us through letting go of those. Yeah. And for anybody that's kind of, you know, thinking like, okay, I'm a travel nurse or I'm about to start travel nursing and I've just got too much. I'm wanting to kind of declutter. Um, the first thing that you kind of have to do is change your mindset on things. Um, and it's not just about getting rid of like items that you own. It's also about mentally viewing things from a different perspective. Um, so there's a few questions to kind of ask yourself to determine what do I need to get rid of? Like, why do I want to get rid of this? Um, and the first thing is what is most important to you in your life? Um, for us, for example, it's time spent with family, um, traveling, and then um, we love spending time outdoors, hiking and exploring. So, um, you know, us by downsizing and by living in our van, when we have time in between our contracts, we're able to go and visit our family and spend time with them without being like, sorry, mom, can't come today. I've got to find a place to live for my next assignment or I've got to pack for my next assignment. Everything is always there. So you're actually able to spend that intentional time with your family, with each other. Um, but it just takes a lot of that extra stress. And then like we talked about earlier with traveling in between assignments, we love being able to do long road trips when we're either um, driving to our next contract and make the most out of that. And just um, having a home on wheels and having a place where you can just pull into anywhere at night and not have to worry about leaving your valuables outside when you're staying in a hotel or in an Airbnb is just really, really nice. Yep. Um, so the next thing that you have to ask yourself is what do I have that is not bringing value to my life? Um, whether it be, you know, material things or, or whatever it is, um, you just gotta, you gotta kind of ask yourself these important questions. Um, I know for us, it was, it was kind of eye opening, um, you know, really digging deep and asking these questions. It's like, oh, well, you know, when I really think about it, I don't, I don't need that. It's not really bringing a whole lot of value and, and you know, happiness to my life. So um, another question is, why have I been holding on to the things that are not bringing me value? Which was, a, that's another big issue mm -hmm. um, in itself, um, you know, and there, there may be a good reason why you're holding on to these things. Um, but what we found for the most part was there was none. Yeah. I mean, I think a, a lot of times people hold on to things, you know, sometimes it could be for status reasons. Um, you know, maybe having more stuff, you know, could make you appear like, you know, you have a higher status for some people, things are sentimental, um, and it has an emotional attachment. So just trying to figure out why have you been holding on things that are not bringing you value? Um, and kind of get to the bottom of that and it'll help to serve you better. Yep. Um, you wanna go ahead? Yeah. Um, and then the last question that we kind of came up with was, uh, can I see myself being happy if I let go of these things that aren't bringing me value uh, to live a more fulfilled life? Mm -hmm. So, you know, in the grand scheme of things, do you see yourself being happy if you if you decide to take the jump and and let go of these these things that, you know, we felt in our case were holding us down and, and mm -hmm. uh, kind of more or less a burden um, in the long run when we really broke it down, you know? Yeah. Um, and then we just wanted to kind of share uh, regarding the emotional attachment. Um, there was a study done by Tim Kasser um, and it was uh, just, he did a study about extrinsic and intrinsic goals um, and the psychological effects on it. And he found in his research um, with the mental effects of consumerism that when people organize their lives around extrinsic goals like possessions, image, status, um, and things like product acquisition, that they reported greater unhappiness in relationships, poor moods, and more psychological problems compared to those who trace, chase intrinsic goals like personal growth community and connection. And we really saw this when we decided to declutter our living space and also kind of our mental space. Um, once we stopped, I guess, you know, buying more things constantly, I feel like as travel nurses, you're always seeing new things at places you go. So you're like, 
oh, I need this, I need this. And a lot of times for me, I loved um, like all the home decor stuff that we would always find. So I did have a lot of that that I had to kind of let go of. But um, when you aren't going out and buying these things, you actually have more time for things that bring you true happiness. Instead of going shopping when we were on assignment, we started getting outside, we started hiking more. Um, and all the, the stuff that we used to kind of find important just fell away because when you are living in a place for three months at a time and really appreciating the beauty of it, you're not really thinking about, you know, is buying this going to make me look cool or do I really need these nice pants? You're really focusing on just enjoying your time in that one place. So um, being a travel nurse, it's, it's a really great time to kind of declutter your life and um, let go of some of these attachments. Yeah, I know before we uh, really downsized, another thing we realized was when we were, were out hiking, which was most of the time when we weren't working, mm -hmm. um, it was, you know, we brought all these clothes with us and we, we kind of took a step back and realized we wear the same thing mm -hmm. every time we go hiking. You know, we wear the same thing when we're off. Um, the extra clothes we had never got worn. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, it's, it's kind of things like that, that we, we had to take a step back and kind of look at it from a bird's eye view and realize that, you know, we don't need all this stuff. Yeah. And I think too, um, before we started travel nursing, we lived in Charleston, South Carolina. And if you've ever been to Charleston, you probably, or have seen it on the TV shows, you probably know that people are a little bit more, um, you know, dressed up. It's kind of common there for people to be walking down the street and have on nice clothes and heels. And um, it really is seen of a, as kind of a status thing. And while Ty and I have always been pretty casual um, and like, our, I feel like we're pretty laid back and casual in our clothing, no matter what, but yeah. people there kind of view that as a status thing. So when we started traveling, it was like, no one really cares what you're wearing. You're not seeing the same people over and over. And it really kind of put things in perspective for us. I feel like just, you know, just seeing how other people live and just knowing like nobody really cares if you're wearing a nice dress out to dinner, you can wear your hiking clothes and no one's going to say anything to you. It's fine. Um, and then. Um, so we uh, did a little bit of research um, and we uncovered some, some pretty eye opening statistics um one that we really clinged on to was uh by josh becker um he has a blog it's called becoming minimalist um he shares some statistics about consumerism um that really just kind of puts things in perspective um so uh, there are three hundred thousand items in the average american home which kind of blew my mind that's that's a lot. I think we only have room for what, like a hundred. Uh, yeah, not even <laughs> close to 300,000. Um, another one was the average home has more television sets than people and are turned on for more than a third of the day, which is eight hours and 14 minutes. Which, which is, is just crazy. Yeah, I mean, that's insane. the amount of time that people, you know, people that don't work 12 hour shifts, that's the amount of time that they're working. So just the fact that there's a television on for eight hours of the day and most households is kind of mind-blowing uh, yeah when we have patients in the hospital that are like oh yeah i'm watching the show um you know have you seen it i can't relate at all because we don't even have a tv so we don't watch tv at all <laughs> um let's see and then another statistic that we found is that shopping malls actually outweigh or outnumber um high schools in america and 93 percent of teenage girls rank shopping as their favorite pastime and hobby um and then two other ones that we found really interesting um, one is that americans spend 1.2 trillion dollars annually on non-essential goods aka items that are not necessary in the home um, and then the last one was that over the course of one person's lifetime the average amount of time that you spend searching for a misplaced item is or items over the course of your life is 3,680 hours or 150 days in your entire life. 53 days. 53 days. <laughs> searching for misplaced items. That's insane. 
Yeah, so reading those just kind of put things into perspective about how much time, you know, is wasted when you're constantly having that desire for more and more and more and not really, you know, doing the mindset shifts and focusing on what's important in your life. Um, so let's talk about some tangible tips that you can do to kind of declutter your life and declutter your space. Um, and these are all things that we kind of did throughout the process of decluttering and living more simply. Um, the first thing is to look at the things that you own and think about how often you use them. Um, and it sounds simple. If you actually sit down and do this, you're going to be really surprised, um, you know, by how often you actually use it. I know uh, Steve said in the beginning that he's holding on to some sweatpants that he's had for about 20 years that he just can't let go of. And we were the same way. It was like, I know I'm going to use this sometime in the future, um, even if I haven't used it in like 10 years. So um, if you actually think about, am I ever going to use this? How often do I use this? Um, it's it's pretty surprising. Shocking, really. Yeah, we just kind of went through all of our stuff once we moved into the van and kind of said, OK, have I worn this in the past? We started off with like, you know, a year. And then, you know, if we had a, had worn in the past year, have I worn in the past six months? Is this something that I used, you know, last winter? And if it wasn't and we hadn't used it in over a year um, or in the last season, then we would just kind of get rid of it. And the things that we didn't need, we would, you know, we could either resell or donate. Um, but yeah, just kind of going through all of your stuff and thinking realistically, is this something that you, that actually brings you value? Yep. And then uh, we asked ourselves, um, is this a need or a want? Is this something that, um, you know, you need to survive day to day? Is this something, you know, clothing, clothing on your back. Like I said earlier, we wore the same things um, when we were not working. Mm -hmm. It was scrubs and then, you know, one or Hiking two clothes. Yeah. pairs of clothes that we wore over and over again. Um, food, water, you know, those are things you need. Mm -hmm. um, we had a lot of wants on our list when we really broke it down. Mm -hmm. um, that's a that's a big one that you need to ask yourself with with your stuff. Um, you also want to consider practicality um, over things that are aesthetically pleasing. So I know our first trip we had, you know, paintings and we decorations. Paintings, and <laughs> we brought like picture, and I'm not talking like just a few pictures, like we brought whole albums, we brought pi yeah, pictures and paintings that we could hang up wherever we were to make things feel homey. And while it is really nice to like take a few items, um, we took like everything yeah we took a lot just everything basically that we had in our bedroom before we took when we first traveled and we realized okay this isn't gonna fly if we're gonna be moving every three months we need to really think about okay what is special to us and what's gonna remind us of home versus you know let's all of this stuff is very sentimental to us because in reality we put all that stuff in the apartment that we had and on our first assignment and we never even looked at the sentimental stuff that we or that we thought was sentimental to us or had value. We never looked at it once. So um, just kind of thinking, you know, is this going to look nice or is this something I actually need? Yeah. And, this, and not to say you can't. Yeah. Because we I mean, we do. We have uh, a, a very a minimized mm -hmm. uh, amount of, you know, family pictures or mm -hmm. our wedding pictures, you know, stuff that really means a lot to us um, but it is nothing like what it was mm -mm. and same thing with clothes um i think like ty was saying a lot of times you pack like i know our first contract we packed like really nice clothes <laughs> i don't know where we like thought we, we were, were gonna, gonna wear go it out. but yeah we were packing like you know nice pants nice shirts and you know while we still do bring like one you know, probably like one nice, nice outfit, um, just realistically based on the activities you do, it just doesn't make sense. If, you know, if you're someone that goes out more with friends, um, you probably aren't going to need like 10 hiking outfits or 20 hiking outfits. Um, and then vice versa, like with us, if we're outdoors most of the time, you know, we had, there was like a whole Tupperware box that it was huge and it took up a lot of space. And I don't think we ever opened it or used anything in that box of our like really nice clothes for the first There's two assignments. Of a closet. So, um, and then another tip is 
Um, don't just go into a store to pass the time. Um, and that also goes for shopping on Amazon, um, unless you actually need to buy something. Um, I know that, you know, everybody would love going into Target and just browsing. And if you spend enough time in Target, Target will tell you <laughs> that you need something. I was told Ty, I was like, I don't know what I need. Target will tell me what I need. I don't even go into Target. So just kind of limiting, <laughs> limiting yourself and thinking, okay, if I go in here, is it going to tempt me into buying something I don't need that I'm not ever going to use or that maybe I'll use once or wear once um, just with whatever store is your weakness. Um, and Ty kind of has to do the same with Amazon. That was his, his big uh, weakness. It's was, so easy just to click the button. Yeah. So just really making that decision and having that discipline of, okay, if I am bored and I need to pass the time, I can go for a walk or I can hang out with my friend or my pet or, you know, whatever it is that you enjoy doing with your free time. Um, not just being more intentional with that and not just walking around looking for things to buy. Yep. And, um, you know, before you make a purchase, think about if you already have a similar item or if it's something uh, you really need in the long run. So, yeah, again, just going back and being, uh, you know, intentional about about the things that you purchase um, or things that you you have with you. Um, it's wants or needs. And we like I said, we found that a lot of the stuff we had were wants. And, and uh, once we got rid of all of it, and just had the stuff we needed, mm -hmm. it uh, kind of opened our eyes to you know, it doesn't really take a whole lot. You can mm -hmm. really be happy and and uh, make it with very little. Yeah, and I think too, um, thinking about if you already have a similar item, um, we actually will look through our clothes um, pretty much every time we go home. I think we get rid of stuff because, I mean, if you think about what do you wear every week, especially for nurses, like Ty said, you're always, you know, you're wearing scrubs three days out of the week, kind of some nurses even, you know, will do overtime, um, especially lately with the crisis contract. So you're doing a lot of that um, and just wearing scrubs for most of the time. And then on your days off, typically you do, you wear what's comfortable to you or, you know, what you're going to need. So we always kind of look once we finish our assignments, okay, do I have, you know, six pairs of denim shorts? Do I have six pairs of leggings? And out of these, you know, which one or which two do I wear the most? Um, because realistically you're seeing different people every three months. No one's going to notice if you're wearing, you know, a different pair of leggings every time that you see them. Yeah. And we do the same thing, um, too, with our like outdoor equipment. Um, that's like one of our big things now is we always are like, okay, we need to get this, this, and this for our camping trips. Um, so we also kind of assess those items too, whatever it is, that's your hobby. Um, really think about is this something I need? Could I buy it secondhand? Um, we've also used a lot of like secondhand uh, outdoor gear stores. To, awesome. Yeah, to find things where if we'll only need it for a little bit of time on assignment, you can also purchase it for a cheaper price there. Or um, and then you can also you know sell it once it's time to leave um, your assignment location so that you're not wasting a lot of space. Um, so creating more space. Uh, for things you for you to enjoy um to us the the equation was pretty simple having less equals more free time to do things that we truly love um we we kind of set a goal for ourselves. um you know instead of of chasing the almighty dollar and and you know just spending it on things we didn't need we kind of set a goal um and we said you know we're gonna save our money that we make, um, and, you know, put it towards things that we love, uh, traveling mm -hmm. or, you know, um, a long-term goal for us is to buy a bunch of land somewhere and just, you know, be out there in the wilderness and, and enjoy life. And, you know, that was the goal that we set for ourselves. Um, and that, I think that really helped, mm -hmm. um, with the, the saving and not spending. Yeah. Um, so you know, in doing that, the time that isn't wasted chasing a consumer lifestyle, um, it can be replaced with building connections, 
um, relationships mm -hmm. and truly experiencing uh, life to the fullest. Yeah, I think there's like this culture of busyness. Um, it's it's hard to let go of, but you're always thinking I've got to stay busy. I've got to, you know, keep buying things. I've always got to have the newest trend or the next best thing. And um, all of that is, it just, it builds clutter mentally and physically. So I think, you know, once you're able to kind of let go of that, you're able to spend more time with your family and your friends and really like cultivate these relationships if that's what's important to you. Um, and also just have more time to do things that you enjoy um, and really to experience life on your contracts. I think with travel nursing or any type of travel health care, um, we're in such a special situation where you have such limited time in places. And if you're filling it with, you know, always going out, spending money and, you know, I guess like weighing yourself down with stuff, you don't really have a lot of time to like really experience the location. Yeah. What we found after, uh, you know, decluttering our life and, and really uh, getting down to the, the basics and having just the basics, um, we got rid of things that filled the space around us. Um, and in return, it filled our hearts with joy and gratitude, mm -hmm. you know, seeing that we don't need all this stuff. Um, you know, we're, we're happier. Um, and another, uh, study that they did that we didn't talk about before was, um, the, the serotonin that's dumped every time you, you make a purchase. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's a, it's a short term happiness. It's a short term, um, void that is, that is filled or, or whatever the reason might be for, you know, spending. Um, but it doesn't last long mm -hmm. at all. Um, I can't remember exactly uh, how long they said in the study, but it's it's just a small temporary, I guess, high mm -hmm. from from spending and, and buying stuff um, that's not going to last. And, and what they found was in the long run, um, like we said, the relationships, uh, the the living life and just being, you know, the person you want to be or, or seeking to be uh, without all that stuff. It, makes you happy in the long run. Yeah, I think you're just you're more grateful for what you have um, just in general. And you're also more grateful for just time, just time of peace and time of stillness. I know that um, like really before we moved into the van, um, it was always, OK, we've got to go, go, go. We've got to go here. We've got to go there. And um, just kind of decluttering our stuff and just having that time to kind of relax in between assignments or relax throughout the week. Um, it's, it's just been really nice. You truly are able to really appreciate the moment and appreciate the time that you have, you know, with what we've, we've had with each other. We've had when we, you know, are in different locations, but it's just really helped you to really appreciate what you have and the time that you have with your loved ones. Yep. So we will see if we've got some comments or questions. Let's see. And if anyone has any questions, um, just let us know in the comments and we'll take some time to answer those. Let's see. Looks like a lot of technology questions, which we cannot help with at all. <laughs> Let's see. What was your favorite travel location and what was an unexpected experience from one of your travel assignments? Oh, man. Well, we've gone to Washington state three times. Um, so I think that's probably one of our favorite places. If you follow us on Instagram, you see a lot of Washington and a lot of Pacific Northwest content. Um, we love it there. There's so much to do outdoors. If you're a travel nurse and you've never experienced a summer in Washington, we would highly recommend it. Um, and if you don't like hiking and you don't like the outdoors, um, the food scene is great. Um, people that we know that like going out and going to bars and stuff, that scene is also great. So there's a little bit for everyone. Um, so we really love that. And we also loved, there's so many good ones. Yeah, a lot of people ask this question. It's, it's really a hard question to answer mm -hmm. because um, everywhere we've been has its own kind of beauty. It's, it's different in every place, but it has its own kind of beauty. But um, yeah, Washington's definitely one. Um, personally, New Mexico um, mm -hmm. is definitely the top three for me. That's a, 
a really beautiful state. Mm -hmm. um, Arizona. Everywhere is beautiful. We could just sit here and list yeah, out I mean, every could... <laughs> contract because, yeah, every every place ha is like beautiful in its own way. It's really yep. hard to kind of narrow down. But I will say, if you've never been to Phoenix in the summer and then, well, Phoenix, I'm Phoenix sorry, in Phoenix the in the winter, don't go in the summer, Phoenix in the winter, and then um, the Washington, uh, Seattle, Tacoma area in the summer is really beautiful. Yep. Um, let's see. Rachel says I'd. I need to avoid Target and Costco. <laughs> we we feel you. Let's see. And what was an unexpected experience from one of your travel assignments? Um, I don't know, uh, Robin, if you're meaning like in the hospital or in just maybe in uh, general, but we've, I guess hospital wise, we've had a few unexpected things happen. Um, one of the craziest ones was we went into work one day at one of the hospitals we were working at and we found out that um we had been our <laughs> that our manager had kind of switched our units um to something that we usually don't work um at all, at all. um we went from pcu to working on a um women's, women's floor. floor so that was pretty awkward for ty so i would say that's one of our most unexpected experiences from an actual assignment um and we handled that we just spoke with our recruiter we still actually you know did our jobs that night did everything as we should and reached out to our recruiter um and she handled everything from there and reached out to the hospital and let them know that you know that wasn't an okay thing to do um so as a traveler things that are unexpected are always going to happen and you just kind of have to roll with it let your recruiter or your company know right away um yeah, just and roll with the punches. Roll with the punches. <laughs> it's going to constantly be crazy and yeah. constantly be an you adventure. You have to be flexible, but mm -hmm. uh, in that situation, cross the line. Let's see. <laughs> but, um, and then are there any states or places that haven't been RV friendly? Um, so we travel in a van, so it's a little bit, we're a little more flexible because um, we, I guess, having a smaller uh, rig, we're able to pull into just a regular parking space. Um, but I do think that we're from the Southeast and I will say that just the South Southeast in general, there are not as many options. Yeah. You know, you go out West to like Washington, Arizona, Utah, a lot of those places have so much free public land. Um, and also a lot of RV parks and campgrounds that you can stay on. And then you start making your way through the Midwest and back to the Southeast. Um, I'm not really sure exactly how it is up in the Northeast, but um, I will say that just the Southeast in general, um, you really do have to kind of do a lot of extra planning um, when you're traveling to those states. We've, we've done an assignment in North Carolina and that was before we moved into the van. Um, so we were renting an apartment. I know there are some RV parks in those areas, but you really have to kind of do your research and they're usually not from what we've seen they're not as nice as the ones and not as many of them as there are out west um, and then how do you handle gifts that don't fit into your lifestyle that are given to you by family co-workers and friends uh, well i think you know honestly i think once we kind of moved into this lifestyle our family was you know even for christmas they just kind of know and we you know let them know we really I really feel like we didn't need any, like, you know, we just let them know we don't really need much. Or if you do, we can't really accept larger gifts, but they kind of automatically knew that we didn't really have to let them know. Um, yeah. But a lot of times they'll give us like gift gas cards, cards, gas cards. Awesome. Yeah. Um, but yeah, anything like that, that, you know, we, like we said, we love the outdoors. So they'll give us like an REI gift card or something like that, that doesn't take up a lot of space. Um, and then if we need something, uh, like a bigger purchase, um, we're able to go and and use that for those purchases. Yeah. But yeah, a lot of gas cards, a lot of um, gift cards to like grocery stores and restaurants. Um, and that's always something really great to ask for. It doesn't take up any space and it also helps you save money in the long run. Um, let's see. And then. Uh, share. Oh, okay. And let's see. I think Rob, this was for Robin's question on whatever is memorable and helped to shape your decisions. Um, I think the main thing was um, traveling cross country, and we mm -hmm. had 
this whole trip planned out these hikes you know that we wanted to do in different states and when we you know started getting these these places we were like our our cars are full of stuff like people can see inside of our cars mm -hmm. this is a perfect target like you feel very vulnerable um so that that was one of the main things for us i feel it was like okay we gotta we gotta switch things up a little bit this is like we're putting it out there for everyone and mm -hmm. i mean it's it's like i said vulnerable almost feeling mm -hmm. and i think too just along with traveling cross country um with carrying all that stuff i think that it was kind of like a security blanket for us when we lived at home and then once we traveled we had these cars packed full and we weren't even really using the stuff or using the stuff that we had in our apartments um once we started travel nursing and we realized okay this is not the stuff that is memorable to us this is not the stuff that you know brings us joy and we spent a lot more time it really surprises how much time we spent traveling we didn't spend a lot of time in our apartment when we were renting and travel nursing we were always going camping or taking road trips on our days off so um, i think just having that experience and it just kind of put things into perspective for us about what really was like important to us and just kind of showed us like to value our time and showed us how we wanted to spend our time. Do you have favorite? A favorite brand of items favorite. that help you to be more organized. Oh, um, rubber made we, <laughs> tubs. No, <plastic>. we, we <laughs> you know, I, I don't know if we have necessarily a favorite brand, but we do love the um, packing cubes. I, this is like my this is one of our too, yeah. this is my favorite thing. Um, the little travel packing cubes that you have for clothes, because this was Clothes was something that took up a lot of space for us before because we would carry the big, um, like giant Rubbermaid containers. So we would fill our stuff with that and it was really bulky. Um, so um, if you look, you know, it's, I, I can't remember the brand. Um, I'll have to look and see. You just Google probably packing cubes. Packing cubes, yeah. yeah. Um, but they're just these little cubes. You can put your clothes in it and it helps you to stay really organized. You can- They just zip and it like compacts everything mm -hmm. and do a small, smaller space. But yeah, I think that's probably one of our favorite like organizing hacks that we have. We also will keep certain things. And I feel like with the van, it's really taught us to be very organized. Um, so we, well, I try. <laughs> so we keep, um, you know, certain things in like our important papers in a yeah. folder, a designated folder. Um, our kitchen stuff is in one little We have spots like, section. for everything. Mm -hmm. And containers for everything. Yeah. And then um, let's see, Rachel says, social media apps like Instagram and Pinterest create the want of items too. And sometimes we need to minimize what and who we follow. And I completely agree with this. Um, we love Instagram. We love sharing things on Instagram, but sometimes it can be very time consuming. And um, we've had that conversation, you know, too, of like, it's really easy to scroll and look at what everyone else is doing. Um, so kind of what we do is less scrolling. Um, we love sharing content. We love creating like helpful resources. So we just try and focus on that. Um, and especially just like first thing in the morning and before we go to bed, um, not looking at it and not starting the day and not ending the day with social media. Um, and it just kind of helps to keep our minds clear and um, focus on setting intentions and goals for the day. Yeah, I think it, a lot of this stuff goes back to the consumerism thing to their whole, the whole idea behind consumerism is putting it out there, making it appealing, you know, for you to, to get the next best thing, you know, so, um, you don't, you don't need that stuff. Oh, let's see. And then Steve asked, have you ever gotten rid of anything that you seriously regretted later and had to repurchase? Honestly, no, no. we've lost things. <laughs> Ty's, Ty lost his laptop before at a, a, yeah. we were staying in a hotel um, and he regretted <laughs> that decision. But honestly, I think things that we intentionally, um, you know, have let go of and given away or sold. Um, I, I can honestly say that there hasn't been anything. I think that's the whole, you know, the whole purpose behind being really intentional of is this something that I really use um, or that I you know, don't use very often and just really making those hard decisions. 
Um, and if it is something that you use and is important to you, then keep it. Um, so that's what we did. Anything that we used, you know, like I said, within the last year. But I, I don't think that somebody out there is using that laptop more than I do. I know. <laughs> um, and then let's see. She's. I don't know what I would do without a TV. I need to make some changes. Um, yeah, I think we had a TV on our first uh, contract and then we haven't had one ever since. We do have um, a computer and we do have Netflix. So if we ever decide like we want to watch a movie or catch up on a show, um, but really we don't have a lot of time for that. And a lot of times we don't have service depending on uh, the location that we're traveling in. So uh, we really don't have a lot of time or a lot of extra time where we want to like sit and watch TV. And I don't know if anyone has any extra, any more questions. Let's see, just making sure I don't see any more. Looks like it. Yeah. And if anyone has any um, extra questions or is watching this like at a later time, um, you can always reach out to us on Instagram. It's at we the wanderers um, and just send us a message and we'd be happy to chat with you there too. And we'll bring Steve and Rachel back on. Thank you so much. A lot of good. I'm empowered. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm empowered or I feel like really, really embarrassed because I'm probably <laughs> in many respects the, the opposite of what you guys are talking about. I'm also envious, envious too. I have a lot of questions. We got a few. Can you guys hang out for another few minutes? I got yeah, a lot of questions. Yeah. All right. All right. So uh, interestingly enough, when we were talking about, you know, you were kind of talking about the consumerism, did a little mm -hmm. bit of quick research here as we were off camera and 70% of the U.S. economy is based on consumer purchases. Wow. If you think about that, 70%. So that's not businesses buying enterprise software or anything like that. That is people going out and, and you know, consuming items, whether it is clothes or what have you. So it, it's, amazing how much our you know the united states economy is dependent upon people going out and buying stuff you know uh and, and probably as you said the vast majority of it they just simply don't need uh and i i count count myself in there um so a couple questions for you what where does food fall into this for you guys and what i mean by that is do you also, when you, you um, Megan, you mentioned grocery shopping earlier and getting gift cards for, you know, grocery stores and, and dinner cards and those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. Do you guys look at a, a minimalist lifestyle in that regard? Do you look at, you know, hey, I don't need that much food. We don't need this junk food. I don't need to indulge. How, how does it, how does it pertain to food? Um, well, so I think with, with traveling, we definitely like going out to eat in like the area because every area has different cuisine and different yeah. restaurants. Um, so we definitely will like treat ourselves to going out to dinner if there's a place that we want to go or like trying restaurants or coffee shops in the area. Um, but as far as food goes, I think we're minimal in the sense that we try to use everything that we need. We will go to the grocery store and um, like really think about what we'll need for the entire week. Um, if you've seen a picture of our fridge on Instagram. It's really, really small. We have a pretty tiny fridge and freezer. Um, so we really can only fit like what's necessary. So I will kind of think when I go to the grocery store, I usually go like once a week and I'll think about what items are we going to need for the whole week? How can we use everything so it doesn't go bad? Um, and we try and do a lot of meal prepping and meal planning, which is also helpful for work days too. Um, but yeah, we do try and I guess just be more thoughtful about we don't have a lot of space, so it's not like we can just throw a bunch of stuff in our pantry like we did when we had an apartment. Um, so just trying to not be wasteful and use what we have. And we do use uh, a lot of gift cards when we, um, everyone knows to get us Chick-fil-A gift cards. <laughs> <laughs> that is one indulgence I know that members, members of my family could not do without would be, would yeah. be visiting, visiting Chick-fil-A. What, um, to what extent does environmental concern, climate change, and those sorts of things impact your um, lifestyle in terms of a minimalist lifestyle. Does that play into it at all as well? Kind of thinking about the environment and do I really need this? And I'm, you know, contributing to waste and plastics and those sorts of things. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
most of the the material things that you buy at the store come in some kind of plastic wrapping or um, you know something that really in the long run isn't sustainable um, and you know even though it's it's become more of a, a recycling world a lot more people are recycling it's still a lot of this stuff gets tossed away or, or trashed and uh, mm. uh you know i'm an ocean guy a lot of that stuff ends up in the ocean and that's not cool at all so it definitely uh definitely is in part of our thought process with all of it mm -hmm. yeah it was um disturbing to you know, be reading some recent reports about the microplastics that are essentially now they've detected them in all areas of the planet, including, I believe, the Arctic. And it's kind of a kind of scary, you know, so, fish are eating I, that and then we're eating the fish, which is it's kind of crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of scary and, 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 and depressing at the same time. Yeah. Um, what just from a financial perspective, um, you know, not to get into great detail, but what you know, I would imagine you've probably found yourself like, wow, you know, since we've lived this lifestyle, the money that we're saving and what we used to spend it on, you know, I would imagine the bank account's a little, a little heavier these days because it's just like the, the, the stuff you didn't need before that you're staying away from. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think just to like, I, like the mindless spending of just like, you know, going into a store and just walking around and like picking extra stuff up, like, being more intentional on those things you definitely do see and and you don't even realize that you're like saving money and then you you do you'll look at your bank account later and be like wow i have a lot like a lot more now like what's going on and you realize it's it's just being more intentional about what you're buying and how you're spending it and you know same goes with food you know just trying to you know use what you have at home versus you know going out to eat every day it it, it all adds up yeah, it's and it's, it's it's amazing how much you save when you you know, are more intentional about what you buy. With the, um, you guys mentioned that, you know, you do have a Netflix account. So occasionally you'll watch, uh, you know, a movie or what have you, but you, you know, you don't own a TV in yeah. terms of like entertainment. Do you find yourself, I assume reading more and has that been, I mean, to me, and I, again, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I could do it, but I suppose that if there were, you know, I spent less time you know, watching sports or whatever, and more time, you know, away from that, I'd be, I'd be reading more books. And, you know, there's always, there's a stack of books. I say, oh, I'm going to get to that someday, but you just find yourself, no, I'll read, I'll read it tomorrow night. Do you find yourself, you know, reading more books? And if so, is it like, you know, classics or, you know, new, new novels that have come out I and mean, what kind of, where does that, where does that fall into it? Um, I think, you know, I don't, before we even started kind of living this lifestyle, we really didn't watch TV very much anyway. Um, okay. most of our time is, you know, we'd occasionally watch television shows. We'll have one that we'll like, you know, watch every week, you know, you know, like once a week or something, but, um, we really like going on, we'll go on walks instead of watching TV. We love just going on walks and like mm -hmm. sitting outside. Ty loves playing the guitar, um, things like that. But, and we do, I have noticed we do like read a lot more, usually towards like bedtime. Like, I guess that's kind of the time when you'll wind down. Um, I'm, I love like any type of books that are like self-help books or kind of like just make you really think about things. Um, one that I really like is The Untethered Soul, if anyone's looking for a good book. And then um, Atomic Habits is the one that I'm reading right now. And that's also really good. So if, if, if I can break myself away from the, the TV or my local sports teams, I might find myself a little bit more, a little bit more time, a little yeah. bit more time to read. <laughs> I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to try that. Rachel, can, what do you think? Do you think you can make the transition to a minimalist lifestyle? I feel like what, I what, could work my way into it, but I have family members and different stuff that would just kind of um, not let that, ha not let it happen, but <laughs> It'd be hard to get everybody on board that I would want to be on board because I usually take it a little extreme and expect everybody to join in on the fun. So, <laughs> but I think I could almost do it. Almost. Oh, yes. just, yeah. Well, a lot of times, like if I don't see it, then I forget it's completely there. So if mm -hmm. I just didn't have it, once I got rid of everything, I think I'd be okay. But mm -hmm. doing it would be a little hard. It is, it is amazing what you guys are mentioning earlier about the time wasted trying to find things. And again, yes. 
guilty. I mean, I, it's like, where did I put that? I know I saw it like two years ago and it's like, well, if you haven't used it in two years. Do you really need it? Like the old thing about clothes, right? If you haven't worn it, you haven't worn it in a year, you don't need it. But again, I still got those sweatpants hanging around for 20 years. So I guess you know, I, one of these days, one of these days I'm going to wear them. I can tell you too, as a, uh, I know you guys had said you're from the Southeast originally. I, I don't know if you've done any assignments up in New England, but there's certain, okay. You know, they they call them Yankee lifestyle. So as a as a New Englander, a, na a native New Englander, and living in New England now, you know, kind of the old adage is you 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 hang on to things. You don't throw anything out. You mm -hmm. know, you, you use it, and there's always a use for it. And I think that goes back to obviously the, uh, the you know the the Depression era and and before. So mm -hmm. it's kind of you know strange having grown up in that sort of New England environment. You know, where your parents or your grandparents are saying, oh. Don't throw out that, you know, that tinfoil. Yeah. You might need it someday. You know, you never know when you're going to need to, you know, wrap up a hamburger with this, this tinfoil <laughs> hanging around for a few years. But it, it, it really is kind of, you know, particularly in my area, my area of the country, just, you mm -hmm. know, people tend to hang on to things. I mean, I have a garage, you know, here we go, but a garage full of stuff. And my wife is always saying, well, we need to do a garage sale. It's like, well, we're just going to put it out there and then probably put it back, bring it back in two days later because nobody, nobody wants it, you know, but I have all these things in my garage and it's like, I can't, I can't bring myself to, to throw them out. But I think it's just, I don't know, it's part of the, the New Englander DNA. So you're, you guys are inspiring me. I gotta, I have to start to make some changes here. My garage is going to explode, you know? That's, that's over here in the Midwest too, Steve, us Midwesterners <laughs> and the South. So it's, it's everywhere. Well, like have you said, you? Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead, Rachel. Go ahead. Just like you said, with the consumerism, you know, you work so hard to buy that and you don't want to throw it away or you think you're going to mm -hmm. use it another time. Cause a lot of stuff that I buy is like in advance. I'm like, Oh, I might have like this event to go to. So then I hurry up and buy, the cute little outfit and all that stuff. And so we're just so afraid to throw it away. So it's again, with that consumerism, you guys are really sticking it to the man, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> so you're on their watch list. Right. The fundamentals of the U S economy could be, could be teetering on the brink right now. Oh, if, no. if, people are, if people are we're watching. After us. <laughs> <laughs> but wait, so have you, within your travels and, and folks that you have, um, uh, you know, worked with or become friendly with, have, you know, have some of the information that you've provided them, do you start to notice, you, maybe you've influenced some of your friends and they start to make little changes or, you know, some of your family started to make little changes. Have you seen any, any impact of some of that, some of the information that you're bringing across? I think, yeah. I think people too, like the, you know, the first reaction is kind of like, Oh, that's kind of, you know, it's kind of odd. And then, um, like people start to have more questions, I guess, like once they kind of think about it and they're like, you really only have this much and like kind of, or they're kind of curious about how, how they do it. So I don't, I think it's just more of a, they're just really kind of curious about the lifestyle and then kind of starts that thought process for them to like, what could I change or you know you have seem to have a lot of free time to travel and do this or how are you traveling all the time how are you always going home and it's really because we just kind of simplified our life around what was important to us and i think a lot of people that are like on the the edge and kind of teetering um that we've met you know once they they see it in person and like see that you know oh they're they're actually doing it they're mm -hmm. living that way and you know they're they're happy and and living the life they want to live, um, you know, I think that tends to to push some people over the edge and make the leap um, once they yeah. see it. So. Well, it, it, uh, it, it's inspiring. I think you have inspired me to, I think after, after um, this live stream, I'm going to go upstairs. I'm going to finally get rid of those sweatpants. I mean, it's, I think that'll be, because <laughs> everything, every journey begins with a step, right? That first small step. And I think That's I'm right. going to, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to yeah. go ahead and do <laughs> it. <laughs> well, it was great to see you guys. Thank you guys so much for, um, the great information. It really is. It's actually, it's, it's very interesting. It's very inspiring. And I know we had some great comments and, um, I, I think it's really, um, you know, really helpful information for the travel nurse community. As I said, it was it was one of the most requested topics as we put together the agenda for um, for the virtual conference. So I know um, you know not only did a lot of people enjoy it, 
in terms of watching this live, but also to the on-demand component is going to be great. So thank you guys so much. And thank you for your support of the Gypsy Nurse. I know you you do a, a, a lot for our organization, and we really appreciate it, appreciate your expertise. So thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you so much for, for having us. us. Thank you guys. Our thank pleasure. You. Well, that was wonderful and very motivating. I'm very excited. <laughs> yeah. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, we got two conferences in the books or two um, sessions of the day. Two days, two days. Two, days <laughs> and two very two busy days, so. <laughs> and then we have tomorrow's our last day, so be sure to tune in for that. We have a lot of great speakers coming up. We'd like to take a moment to thank our virtual conference sponsor, Fusion Marketplace. Fusion Marketplace is a one-stop shop for healthcare travelers when they can, um, where they can easily compare benefits, pay packages, and reviews across multiple agencies. As a traveler-first-driven platform, Fusion Marketplace is a curated career experience where healthcare travelers can take control of their career. So if you want to check that out, you can just go to FusionMarketplace.com like we have there on the top. And I just want to thank everybody again for joining us. And we hope to see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, Rachel. See you tomorrow.